Good morning, everyone. Uh, today is the 15th episode of Let's Talk. Um, and I'm here uh, today with a co-host. Um, her name is Emily Fielder uh, with a national ACE and then she's the business specialist. Welcome, Emily. You want to say some words? Absolutely. I am the business specialist with National ACE and we are working with the community of AAPIs to help them through COVID-19. So we are working with on our website, acesmallbusiness.org is where you can see all the resources that we've put together to help. And then we're also doing virtual events and trainings like this on PPP um, just to help you get through COVID-19 as a business owner. And so we're also working today with Abby Wynn Burke, the Vice President at Eastern Bank of Managing Relationships. Here she is. Hello all, thank you for having me, Elena and Emily. I'm excited to help um, our small business community here um, with Eastern Bank. We are actually the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts and New England going on running on the 11th and 12th year in a row. And for PPP, we've actually originated about 8,800 PPP loans of totaling over $1 billion. And ins and outs and a little bit of insight on how to get your um, forgiveness apps through. Thank you, Abby. Uh, welcome, uh, Abby and Emily again. Uh, so let's dive in into the conversation now. Um, the title of this uh, webinar or session is called Insights of PPP Forgive Loan Forgiveness. So the first question I have is that is I feel that it's so confusing <laughs> with all the type of different type of applications that are out there. So Abby, can you tell us like what is the difference for each of them? Yes. So um, there are three types at the moment um, of the forgiveness application. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so sorry about that. Let's start over. Um, so yes, there's uh, three different apps at the moment. They're all called 3508. And then some, two of them have initials at the end uh, or acronyms at the end. So the standard application is a 3508 standard. And then you have a 3508EZ E is an elephant, Z is in zebra. So those are um, the SBA created to give some small businesses a little bit more flexibility because the standard is really like 20 questions. The EZ is going to be like 10 questions, but you do have to answer three um, important criteria questions to be able to use the EZ app. So one is, are you self-employed? Two is, um, did you reduce FTEs? And three is, did you reduce significant payroll expenses more than 25%? So if you answered, um, depending on your answers, you'll be able to use the EZ. And then the last one, which came out about a month ago, is a 3508S, which is the simplified forgiveness form, which is for all applicants loans under 50,000. And there is one tiny criteria that they cannot have any other affiliate partners affiliations with PPP, PPP loans over 2 million. So if you are just solely by yourself and you're um, a, a DBA or a small business and you have no other affiliations with other bigger businesses that had over $2 million in um, exposure of PPP loans, you can just use the 3508S for simplified. And um, that is just four questions. Thanks for the explanation or this signal of that. 
So uh, there is a question from the audience that is asking, what is FTE? It is full-time equivalent. So if you have a bunch of part-timers and or if you have some full-timers and some part-timers, your payroll company will be able to pull averages for FTEs for you. And that's important because those questions that I mentioned, you know, did you, um, did you have any changes on FTEs or um, did you have to put together, or did, you, did you have to enforce safe harbor um, rules? That is all based on FTEs. Got it. So um, in terms of the deadline to apply for the PPP loan forgiveness, um, for instance, when I go to the application, I see this day of October 31st, 2020. Is that actually the deadline? No. So the SBA, all of their forms, they have to have an expiration date for their compliance on the top right hand. So the, that expiration date is only for the form itself, and that will change as the dates change. But for you, you can apply for forgiveness anytime before your term ends of your term of your loan. Um, but most of the time you have, so you have the eight weeks or the 24 weeks of your covered period. So after your cover period, you can start your application, but then most banks have also deferred for 10 months after the covered period ends. So you have a little bit of flexibility there because legislation can change, um, the administrations change. So um, it's really discussion with you, your business partners and um, your accountant to really understand what's the best time for you. All right. So Abby, I have a question. Are payroll costs that were incurred before the covered period, but paid during the covered period eligible for loan forgiveness? Unfortunately, no. So you have to have your, when you, when you do the forgiveness, you have to, um, send us the banks, all of your lenders documentations to then verify, validate the expenses that you paid. So most payroll companies like Gusto, Paychecks, ADP, all professional payroll companies have created a PPP forgiveness summary report. And that's key. That's the easiest one um, to upload to your bank's online portals or send to your lenders. But that dates making sure that when you send that payroll summary report that the date matches your covered date. But because if you are less or more of that covered period, the lenders will send that back to you to get the correct dated summary report. And then another question would be, are payroll costs incurred prior to the covered period but paid during the covered period eligible for loan forgiveness? So again, that's that's a no. It has to be incurred and paid within that covered period. I think that's the hard part. So then again, also um, for the payroll company uh, reports, they also have a look back FTE report along with that summary report. That's also helpful because that helps to validate, you know, did you, um, did you have less FTEs? Did you pay less F, uh, payroll expenses within the covered period? Uh, so Abby, to go back to the application, is there like for those loans that are less than 50,000, like uh, what is the paperwork and then the documentation that they should be applying for? So it's a simplified forgiveness application. So like I said, it's really four questions. It's your annual sales, um, your payroll, and which cover period you're going to pick. And then that affiliate, you know, do you have a, an affiliate of over $2 million? Um, but all the documentation is the same. So you're going to upload or send to your lenders the same documentations that all the other applications have. Um, so the payroll summary report. So a, a question from the audience asking, uh, when you show your financial statement, is there 
in need of X number of years to reflect that you need this forgiveness to apply for the PPP loan? So you don't need to show your financial statements. You don't, you don't need to show your P&L, your balance sheet. Um, you need to show the payroll report. So the summary report, your 941s, um, your rent checks. So your paid, um, paid rent checks or bank statements that show that it's been a paid rent check um, or a copy of your lease. Um, mortgage interest statement, um, utility bills, but it's not just the bills, it's the bills plus the paid um, check or the paid ACH payment. Got it. So Emily, do you have any questions from the National ACE members? Um, we haven't had any come in yet, but Abby, I guess just a general question. Mm -hmm. What do most people not know about PPP loan forgiveness that you wish they knew? Oh, um, that's a great question. <laughs> that is a great question. So I think definitely documentations, getting all your documentations ready. Um, so a lot of banks, um, the banks that have started the forgiveness app since the beginning of August, they've spent a lot more time than projected because they've gone back and forth with the customers, back and forth on documentations. So really getting a handle of the documentations. So on the application, any line item that you disclose. So if you disclose payroll expenses, if you disclose non-payroll expenses, any time that that you list a number greater than zero, you need to then show documentation that that has been spent. Um, making sure your covered period. So you have the eight options of for those that got their PPP loans during round one and half of round two, you have the option of eight weeks or 24 weeks. So um, picking one of those, but then you also have the option of picking an alternative pay uh, covered period. So say I got, oh, and the covered period starts from when you got funded, not when you got approved, but when you got funded. So if you got funded on the 5th of May, and that was a Wednesday, but your payroll um, doesn't run until Friday. So then you can pick the covered period to be um, that Friday's date, and then going through 24 weeks instead. Um, the other one is probably, um, just discussions really back and forth, asking the banks for assistance and advice. So it, we're limited on what we can really advise because we're technically the auditors. And so we can't tell you, Emily, you need to specifically put this number, specifically put that number. So that might be, um, a little bit of a frustration on the business owner's part because they're not getting as much handholding and guidance from the banks, but you have to understand where the auditors. So we can't really tell you what to do and then audit it and then send it back um, to the SBA. And then probably lastly is like the timeline. So the banks have 60 days to review it. A lot of banks are trying to put together the process and get it um, executed and reviewed as soon as possible. But the SBA has 90 days to review it. And even though for the forgiveness uh, started early August, SBA wasn't really looking at these applications until really early September. And so they're behind on a lot of um, reviewing of these. So I know there's some urgency of, you know, either end of the year, you want to get it off your books, you want to sell the business, you want, you know, change of ownership, things like that. Um, we're all, all the banks are happy to help, help, happy to guide, but we're limited on time response as well. So even if you put it in now, even if you're rushing, 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 banks have 60 days, SBA has 30 days. So that's still another five months before it, it could possibly be off your books. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let me drink some water. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I, Question from the audience is saying, assuming that you are using your home as an office, 
can you add in the mortgage payments? No, unfortunately, no. So um, the SBA, actually uh, some good sites to take a look at. A lot of different banks have put together resource centers on their websites. So check your bank's resource center on PPP, but also check treasury.gov and sba.gov. The SBA has usually updates their FAQs, which the last one was October 13th, but that has actually a lot of really great um, information for DBA, sole proprietor, people working from homes, what is um, eligible and what's not eligible. But your mortgage, your residential mortgage, if you're a home office, is not eligible. Got it. So another question is, even if it is 24 weeks, the forgiveness is still only for eight weeks, right? No. If you pick 24 weeks covered, you have 24 weeks to show those expenses. And so say you're in between where you, you know, if you had $100,000 in, in a PPP forgiveness loan and you spent $100,000 in 20 weeks on payroll, you can still pick your 24 weeks and just show your summary report for those 20 weeks of expenses. And then that should um, be be approved for, for the forgiveness. And that follows up with another um, note is that you have to spend at least 60% on payroll. So if you get to 100% on payroll, then you don't have to disclose any other expenses. But if you don't get to that, if you only get to 60% payroll, um, then you have to use the other ex non-payroll expenses to validate. So again, back to the 100,000, if I only showed 60,000 on payroll, I have to then show 40,000 of non-payroll expenses. But if I've already spent 100,000 on payroll, then I only have to show payroll expenses. Make sense? Got it. So basically, if we were to use all the 100% to the payroll, there is no need to show for the other expenses. You got it. Got it. You got it. And all the information that you send to the bank gets funneled to the SBA. So just keep that in mind. And then I think there's probably some safe harbor questions, you know, if my business closed by um, state city regulations, if I had um, FTE uh, employees that chose not to come back to work for me, but I, you know, got letters from them, affidavits from them. So all of those are awesome. Keep it as a record. You do not have to send it to the lenders. But if we send your application to the SBA and the SBA does request it, that's when we'll um, start collecting it from you. So make sure you keep it as a record, but it's not necessarily for you to send to the lenders right away. Emily, why you go on your end? Well, my dog is here for a visit as usual. <laughs> <laughs> But um, in terms of questions, I guess this has been really, I've learned a lot already about it. And Abby, I, I don't have any questions from National Ace right now, but we do have people watching. So thank you so much for everything that you've shared. I feel like a lot of the questions they had, maybe you've already answered, which is great. That means that you've given some good <laughs> insights. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then probably the last thing that I would say is, um, again, whatever, whenever you apply, because you have, the, you know, everybody has that urgency, like I need to apply right away. I'm done with my 24 weeks. Let me apply. And if you're putting pressure on your lenders, that's okay. But make note that if you start your application process today and legislation changes in a week, you can't backtrack that application. 
So you do have to kind of balance out what potential could change via legislation. So I would say, you know, really reach out to um, your state reps, senators to see, um, read the news, kind of get yourself updated on things that could be happening, um, will be happening. I think, you know, the House and the Senate are talking about another stimulus package. So whatever is best decision for you, make sure that you're well knowledgeable about it and that you also know that whatever happens next, you can't backtrack it. Um, and then just really have that discussion with your accountant as well. All right. So I got this question. Uh, when you get approved for the loan, but still do not make consistent income from your business, then is there a, is the, there are deferral payment period for rental forgiveness toward 2021. So you got approved for the origination loan and then your income sales went down. Like it's not consistent income. So is there any deferral payment period for the forgiveness toward 2021? So you have to reach out to your lenders to see um, it is very much based on their risk and their appetite. Um, as for Eastern Bank, we did an automatic deferment for our customers for 10 months um, to give them that little bit of flexibility. So it is based on the lender's decision and double check that. Um, and um, yeah. And then so before any other questions, but we actually, nobody asked about EIDLs. So a lot of times at the origination side, um, EIDL advances were incorporated within the PPP forgiveness um, because a the PPP loans were a lower interest rate and or easier access to those funds um, because EIDL was just taking a little bit longer. Um, just make sure to remember that that EIDL is not forgiven. That is a loan. So if you incorporate the advanced part into your forgiveness, you're going to have a gap, a difference. So say that 100,000 again, and I did the EIDL loan for 10,000 advance. Now, instead of getting forgiven the 100,000, I'm only forgiven the 90,000. So again, talk to your accountant, double check your EIDL um, loan agreement and um, just understand um, that expectation. So I believe some of our audience uh, do not know what is the EIDL. Do you, <laughs> can you explain what it is? <laughs> it is the, I might get the acronyms wrong, but it's the Emergency Impact Disaster Loan also from the SBA. So at the beginning of the pandemic, the SBA launched out PPP, which is um, the, the Paycheck Protection. And then they also launched out EIDL. So they were both simultaneously together, um, but one covered a little bit different expenses than the other. Okay, I guess somebody in the audience still do not understand. <laughs> um, so a lot of businesses um, on the origination side, they would be able to have access to the EIDL loans as well as access to the PPP. And because, you know, it just happened really fast and there were a lot of moving parts, the SBA um, gave banks and lenders the options to add in the advance amount of the IDL loan into the PPP forgiveness. And so because we added it in in the front end, we now need to figure out what to do on the back end of it, which is the forgiveness side. Um, and so really, if you do have an EIDL loan, just make sure to double check the loan agreements, double check the SBA.gov your PPP. 
Thank you, Abby. I think our audience understood. <laughs> Perfect. And then another form that came out from the SBA about a week and a half ago um, is the 3509 and the 3510. So this has to do with those PPP loans that are over 2 million and or have aff affiliates of over 2 million. And that one is required for those loans. And so just making sure that you have that form filled out when you're putting in your application. Got it. So uh, for instance, like Eastern Bank, would they have like their own form online instead of using the SBA forms? Yes, good question. So we are doing an online portal similar to the origination. So it's very much customer initiated, custom self-guided, very intuitive, but we feed all of the information, all of the questions from the SBA forms and then have it as an online um, version for you. So you do not need to fill out the paper version, PDF, or sign it. You just fill out all the same questions on our online portal and then upload the documents. So I think a lot of banks have gone that route just for easier um, access for customers and um, more of, of a virtual environment. Um, with that said, the application does request you for your PPP loan number and your bank account number. So if your bank is doing an online portal version, virtual portal version, they will already systematically feed that information through. Um, so you don't have to call the banks to ask for that information. Got it. So is there any other tips that you can provide <laughs> or anything that we might have not covered so far? Um, I would just say, you know, have patience because of the timeline, um, have the discussion with your accountant, um, and just have all the paperwork prepared. Um, I would say, like, I mentioned for our online portal. So I've had, I've seen it where our customers, if they have filled out the online portal and have all the proper documentations, we've actually reviewed and approved it on the lender side and sent it back for customers to sign within really like a 24 hours, 48 hours. I say that now because we haven't had a lot of um, the volume just yet, but if you have a full documentation, everything done on your app, you will see a quicker response. Um, it's the ones that don't have all the documentations that it takes a little bit more time for the banks to go back and forth with the customer. So, so basically, I'm oh, sorry, Amy, go ahead. I, I was just gonna ask Abby, when do you think it will be busiest for the banks and maybe the worst time to submit your paperwork, just from your perspective? I think it's going to be December. I think after this week, um, next week is going to be Thanksgiving week, but I think the week after those first two weeks in December, everybody's going to want to get their apps done before the end of the year. But understand just because you put it in to the lenders, it doesn't mean it's gonna be done before the end of the year because lenders get 60 days, SBA gets 90 days. So just keep that in mind. I would say that's a busy time. Um, and then if legislation changes. So I would see legislation change and then customers who had waited for that legislation change to then say, okay, I'm ready to send it in. Okay, so I don't have any other question from the audience. Um, Emily, how about for your and through National A's? Uh, we don't have any questions right now. But again, Abby, this has been so informative. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your morning to help us. Yes, for sure. Thank you both for being such fantastic hosts. And um, I'm always available for questions.
Yeah, thank you so much. So I guess we can uh, close today's session, but like Abby indicated, she's available to be reached out if you have any particular question about PPP loan forgiveness. And I want to also thank my co-host today, Emily Fielder uh, from National Ace. Uh, that she came on board and then share this information to, through your uh, membership. I appreciate your, your support and collaboration today. Thank you. All right, see you next time to the next episode. Thank you.